Even Emily agrees with the divorce. Kenny mailed me the divorce papers while I was stationed overseas for work. When I asked him what was going on, he started blaming me for unreasonable things. And at the same time, I ended up being treated horribly by our daughter. I'd reached my limit and immediately took action. Just like they wanted, I proceeded with the divorce right away. This will make life so much easier. I couldn't help but let that thought slip out. I was so thrilled by their proposal. Without telling them anything, I quickly had the divorce finalized and planned to give them a little surprise before moving abroad. My name is Samantha Harper. I'm 40 years old. I used to be a world-renowned professional dancer. Now, I'm retired from active performance, but I still travel the globe with my dance team as the owner and coach. Last month, we were in France. Currently, we're staying in another country. We're spending our days in intense training, trying to absorb the powerful and dynamic dance styles of the local dancers. Speaking of which, isn't your daughter about to take her college entrance exams? Just like you, does she want to become a professional dancer in the future? Oh please, we don't need more competition. I've been living with these dancers for over five years. We're so close that there are no secrets between us. We share everything like a family. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. Really? She doesn't want to be a dancer? No, it's more like she can't become a pro. My daughter, Emily, once looked up to me and wanted to become a professional dancer. But to be honest, she's not very good. Even if she improved with effort, she probably wouldn't reach the level needed to compete on the world stage. Her athleticism and sense of rhythm are below average. No matter how much she trains, she'll only ever be mediocre. So I told her she should give up on becoming a pro. As a parent, I want to support her. But as a professional, I think she should invest her time in something else and acquire a solid skill. Oh, I totally get that. Since we're pros, we see it even more clearly. In this world, so many people aim to go pro and end up failing. We often wonder, what else could they have achieved in that time? They're right. I think the same thing about Emily. She has no plan for her future. If she fails to become a professional, what will she do then? She came to me wanting to be a pro dancer without any solid plan, with just a vague, I want to be a professional dancer. But this world isn't easy enough for someone without a plan to just blindly aim for the top. It's questionable whether she could even reach a level where she could become a coach. I was furious with her naive thinking, and we had a heated argument. I hope your husband can step in and help your daughter let go of that dream. That's unlikely. He's ridiculously soft on Emily. Unlike me, Kenny would do anything Emily asks. Even if she doesn't have the talent, he'll encourage her with empty words. Maybe that's the right thing to do as a parent, but I find it irresponsible. I know how tough this world is, so I believe that if she's going to give up on her dream just because someone said she couldn't do it, she shouldn't start in the first place. Those who are truly serious about their dreams aren't swayed by others' opinions. They trust their instincts and push forward. That's why they have the resolve and strong will to aim for the world stage. But Emily lacks that determination. She's just going along with Kenny's flattery, aiming to be a professional dancer without understanding reality. She thinks, if my mom can do it, then so can I. But she's saying that based on shallow feelings. And yet, Kenny kept flattering Emily. Emily, you're a real genius. You're such a great dancer and you're beautiful. I'm so proud of you. 
Oh, Dad, you're overpraising me. But do you really think so? I kind of feel the same way. I think I'm overflowing with talent, enough to become a pro easily. Was Kenny's behavior really in the best interest of our child? Before leaving America for the last time, I had an argument with him about it. Well, I'm heading out. Thanks for your hard work. As I was thinking about all this, I realized that today's practice had come to an end. After finishing up the cleaning and packing up, I saw the dancers off and started writing the daily report when I got a phone call. It was from a resident of the homestay I was staying at, letting me know that a letter had arrived for me. Curious, I rushed home to pick up the letter and the contents were shocking. No way. Inside, there was a photo showing Kenny and someone I recognized disappearing into a hotel. I was so stunned by the shocking content that I was at a loss for words. As I stood there, unable to process what I was seeing, my phone rang again through an app, this time from my legal advisor. Have you seen the letter? Oh, what does this mean? Please listen calmly, actually. In the heavy silence, the lawyer began to speak in a serious tone. Hearing what he had to say, I was so shocked that I dropped my phone to the ground. Hearing the sound, Mary, the resident of the homestay, came over and, noticing my day state, spoke to me with concern. What happened? Is something wrong? She's the wife of the house. Mary's always bright and energetic, like a ray of sunshine, and I'm really uplifted by her presence. She's truly my source of strength. The moment I saw her, I couldn't say a word and just clung to her, bursting into tears. After I explained the situation, she told me to go home immediately. How could he cheat on you? That's unforgivable. You need to deal with that man right away. The letter had indeed included photos of Kenny caught in the act of cheating. He hurts you when you're working so hard. Should I go with you? I can bring my husband too, and we'll set your husband straight. Her words, spoken with the genuine anger of a mother, really comforted me. Thank you, but I'll be okay. Talking to you has calmed me down a bit. I said this to reassure Mary, but she still looked at me with concern. Are you sure? But what are you going to do? If you leave it like this, you'll be the one who gets hurt. I can't go back right now. The competition is the day after tomorrow, and the dancers are in full concentration mode. I can't let my personal issues disrupt them. So, you're just going to take it. That doesn't sit right with me. I hate to see you suffer like this. Don't worry. I have a plan. Hearing that I couldn't go back, Mary looked at me anxiously. I smiled to reassure her, then quickly contacted my manager back in the States. I asked her for a favor and spoke to the lawyer as well. Everything's set. Thanks for letting me know. You're welcome. But what are you going to do? I'm going to teach them a lesson. They've been living off me and enjoying themselves. Now it's time for them to pay the price, Kenny. And so, I decided to take my revenge on them. After the competition, I received a letter from Kenny, just as I had expected. How's life over there? Things are the same here. Everything's peaceful. The beginning of the letter was filled with trivial small talk. But when I saw the document unclosed, I furrowed my brow. Let's skip the small talk and get straight to the point. I want us to separate. To be clear, I want a divorce. The letter had a divorce paper attached. I read the letter expressionlessly, and it was full of accusations against me. Honestly, I've been fed up with you for a long time. You can't even support Emily's dreams. You're overseas all the time and don't participate in parenting. 
On top of that, you've left everything at home to me. Honestly, do we even need to stay married? Reading the letter, I was stunned. Kenny was the one who supported my dream of becoming a professional dancer, and he was the one who insisted on having a child. I knew I would be traveling a lot internationally, so I left most of the child rearing to him. That's why I kept refusing for so long. But it's fine. I'll take full responsibility for raising the child. Yet, despite his insistence, it was Kenny who pressured me into having a child. So, I let him take care of the housework and parenting while I pursued my career outside. That's why I never gave up on my dream, and he agreed to my overseas assignments. Under that agreement, I gave birth to our child. I still have the contract we signed at that time in my possession. And yet, here he was, acting like some kind of tragic hero. I couldn't understand what he was thinking, and it made my blood boil. The anger rose within me so much that I nearly crushed the letter in my hand. So, because of all this, I want a divorce. Emily is in favor of it too. I don't want to deal with you directly anymore, so I've unclosed the divorce papers. Please mail them back once you've filled them out. And the address he listed wasn't even our home. It was his parents' house. Now it's clear. Kenny isn't at our home anymore. He is probably staying at his mistress's place. Thanking Kenny for making things so obvious, I signed the divorce papers. Mary, concerned, asked if I was okay. And I flashed her a big smile saying, I'm fine. This will make life so much easier. I was so overjoyed that my inner thoughts slipped out in a whisper. I'd been bleeding dry financially for so long. Now that money could be saved and used for my living expenses, I couldn't be happier. They did whatever they wanted. Now, it's my turn to do the same. They'll regret picking a fight with me. And so, I swore to get my revenge on them. A month later, I returned to the U.S. for a brief visit and took care of some legal procedures. Since then, I've been living abroad. You could call it a permanent relocation. Our dance team is aiming for global success. Since we rarely stay in one place for long, it's much more convenient to have a home base overseas. Thanks to the generosity of Mary and her husband, I've been living with the team. Mary's husband, who works for a real estate company, got us a great deal on an apartment close to their home. As a result, our team's unity improved and we won every match in the latest competition. Everyone could feel the progress we were making. Then it happened. Isn't your phone ringing? Yeah, it is. We were enjoying dinner together when my phone rang interrupting the fun. The caller ID didn't show a name, just an unfamiliar number. Thinking it might be work-related, I answered, only to be met with a loud, angry voice. Samantha, what have you done? Get back here right now. Give me back my house. It was Kenny, and I could hear Emily's voice in the background too. It seemed they had finally realized what was going on after a month, and now they were frantically calling me. When I tried to call you, I found out that both Emily and I are blocked. What's going on? Blocking your family. What are you thinking? Get back here and fix this. Why is our house gone? What happened to our stuff? They were both panicking, their voices shrill as they kept hurling words at me. How could they suddenly want to fix everything after leaving the house and attended for a month? Don't make me laugh. Even though that's what I was thinking, I didn't let any of it show. I kept my expression calm and quietly began to speak. We're divorced now. That house is useless, right? So I went ahead and sold it. Your stuff is with your mom. If you want it, go get it. 
What? With mom? Does she know you sold the house? Kenny was shocked by my confession and raised his voice. As soon as I got back to the States, I immediately filed the divorce papers. I also sold the house, which was in my name, without asking him. Because of their belongings, I contacted his parents. They are much your people who listen to me calmly. Kenny told us out of the blue that you were getting divorced. We've been worried about you, Samantha. Has our useless son done something to make you hate him? He doesn't work much and just lazes around the house, right? Even though you're the breadwinner, as a man, I'm ashamed. They were more supportive and understanding of my career as a professional than Kenny ever was. They also acknowledged that Kenny took care of the housework and parenting, and they always thought I was too good of a wife for him. Because of that, they didn't just take Kenny's side in all this, but listened to my perspective too. Thanks to them, I could explain my situation, and they were furious with Kenny. They even offered to call him right away. That's just awful. When you got married, we talked to Kenny about this, didn't we? And yet, he tried to take away your freedom and handle things so one-sidedly. We'll do anything we can to help, so don't hesitate to ask. At the very least, let us support you. I was truly grateful for their kindness. Even though the situation was embarrassing, they remained warm and considerate towards me. After selling the house, they accepted the belongings via cash on delivery and assured me they'd make sure Kenny and Emily face consequences when they came to pick them up. Of course, Kenny would be billed for all of this later, and everything was settled. Thanks to their generosity, I completed my move out of the U.S. That's a dirty trick, getting my parents on your side. Dirty? Who was it that started this whole thing with unreasonable accusations and then demanded a divorce? Kenny's attempt to play the victim made my anger flare up, and I couldn't hold it back. I heard him gasp on the other end, as if scared by my raised voice. I've been thinking about the future and the kids this whole time, and you're the one who acted on your own despite knowing all of this, and now you want a divorce? Don't be ridiculous. This is what happens when you don't think things through. I fully understood that Kenny and Emily were feeling lonely. Despite that, I did everything I could for them these past few years. Having my efforts betrayed and then being blamed for everything, there's no way I could accept that. Especially when the reason for the divorce was his infidelity. This was beyond outrageous. My anger surged and my voice grew cold. You can't even make responsible decisions on your own, yet you have the nerve to complain. You've been living off me this whole time, and now you're calling me a bad parent because I've been working hard to earn money. Don't make me laugh. Normally, I'm a calm person. I don't raise my voice or threaten others. But this time, I couldn't hold back my emotions. I loved Kenny. And no matter how much we argued, I always thought of Emily. In fact, because they were my family, I tried to face them head on. But who could have imagined that I'd end up being treated like this to the point of being asked for a divorce? There's no way they could understand how I felt when I found out. And I don't want them to understand. Sensing my rising anger, one of the dancers came over to support me gently rubbing my back. I had explained the situation to them and they had offered to help if needed. So I put the phone on speaker and recorded the conversation to have them as witnesses. They were listening in real time as the conversation unfolded. But still, selling the house without asking? That house was mine too. You should have asked for permission. Realizing Kenny was losing ground, Emily spoke up next. Emily has been hostile towards me ever since we talked about her future. 
Our pro team has a junior division, and one of the girls there doesn't get along with Emily. Emily thinks I'm favoring that girl, and that's why I told her to give up on becoming a pro. That's what she's been thinking. No matter how many times I've tried to explain it, she only focuses on her own opinion. When I found myself at a loss, I reluctantly assigned one of my subordinates as an instructor for Emily. She's currently taking lessons from that instructor. The deal was, if she showed improvement and got closer to the pro level, they take her under their wing. But even that didn't satisfy her, so she went to Kenny for support. She convinced him to try and get that other girl kicked off the team instead of focusing on her own progress. Of course, that suggestion was rejected. And since then, she's been constantly picking fights with me. You were never home. Besides, your stuff is safely with your grandparents. What's the problem? Of course, it's a problem. A home is essential for living. And you took that away from us. That's grounds for emotional distress damages. The moment she mentioned damages, I leaned back on the sofa with a triumphant smile. If you think you can get anything, go ahead and try with a lawyer. But it's not going to happen. Why not? Emily bit back at me, clearly frustrated, while I remained completely unbothered. My feelings shifted from exasperation to pity. Do you even know who bought that house and who has been paying for it all this time? Now that the divorce papers are filed, your being there is trespassing and I can have you legally removed. You chose to side with Kenny, so even though you're my daughter, I could have you arrested for trespassing. What? Her ignorance was so blatant it was almost embarrassing, and I let out a deep sigh. She's acting all tough without knowing anything. I can at least give her credit for her audacity. But ignorance is dangerous in life. I decided to hit her with a harsh dose of reality. As Emily gasped in shock, I could hear Kenny talking to a woman in the background. The moment I heard that voice, I smirked and urged her to join the conversation. And another thing, if you're thinking of going up against me, don't bother. Kenny doesn't stand a chance. What do you mean by that? Oh, don't act clueless. The reason is right in front of you, isn't it? Why don't you stop sneaking around and let her speak too? Isn't Hannah there? At the mention of Hannah's name, I could hear both Kenny and Emily gasp. Anna Tarner, Emily's dance instructor and a former member of the same pro team as me. She's an exceptional dancer. And if I weren't around, she could have been the star of the team. Her skills were top-notch, and we were good partners who pushed each other during our pro days. But Hannah didn't see it that way. She, like Kenny and Emily, resented me and used them to get back at me. When I asked her to be Emily's instructor, she used that as an excuse to get closer to Kenny. Even though she knew Emily wasn't that talented, she fed her lies and manipulated both of them. Six months ago, she secured her position as Kenny's mistress. Kenny, meanwhile, was funneling large amounts of money to Hannah, complaining about how tough life was while asking me for more money. It's for Emily's lessons, so could you increase it by about $500? When he'd bring up Emily and the house, I couldn't argue. I had resolved never to let them struggle financially, so I worked hard. No matter how much they asked, I always provided. But look how that turned out. He was buying expensive gifts for his mistress while cozying up to her while I was out earning the money. How could such a ridiculous situation even exist? Suppressing my rising anger, I provocatively lured Hannah into the conversation, and she responded with a calm, confident tone. 
How did you know I was here? She reacted without a hint of panic, staying composed. Unlike Kenny and the others, Hannah handled herself like an adult. I carefully chose my words, making sure not to say anything reckless. A little bird told me, I got a tip that you've been having an affair with Kenny for the past six months. And apparently, Emily's been practically living with you too. You've really done a number on my family, haven't you? Don't blame me for ruining anything. If you'd been keeping things in check, they wouldn't have been so easily taken by someone else, right? You brought this on yourself, so don't make it sound like it's my fault. I was just taking care of Kenny and Emily's mental well-being. Mental well-being? She's just waiting for the divorce to be finalized so she can take what she wants and dump them. I could see right through Hannah's plan. She's always been like that, talented, but willing to use dirty tactics to push others down. Back when she was on the team, the second best dancer after her was someone who was practically my right hand. Before Hannah came along, the two of us were a team, and I even planned to bring her onto the pro team I'm running now. But Hannah, jealous of her skill and my favoritism, leaked private photos of her to a tabloid. That girl also had a modeling career, and Hannah's actions severely damaged it. As a result, she was fired from her agency. The team, fearing a scandal, also terminated her contract. Hannah ruined her life. She told me later that Hannah had deceived her. Hannah gained her trust, drove a wedge between us, and then extracted private information from her, which she sold to a tabloid. When the scandal broke and she confronted Hannah, all Hannah did was laugh and say, It's your fault for trusting so easily. My friend lost her career, friends, and even her lover all at once, leading to a complete mental breakdown. It took a long time for her to recover, and by the time she did, re-entering society was nearly impossible. I eventually brought her onto my team as a manager and she's now in charge of my family's affairs, reporting to me on anything significant. I saw Kenny mentioned on Hannah's blog, so I did some digging, and it was bad. Just like what happened to me, I think Kenny and the others have been manipulated by Hannah. Thanks to my manager, who saw Kenny walking with Hannah in the city and quickly investigated, I was able to catch on to this situation early. The reason I was able to respond so swiftly was because of this sequence of events. Finally, after all these years, I'm getting my revenge on Hannah. I kept my excitement in check and responded to her words. Mental well-being care at a hotel, huh? I wonder what kind of care that was. And it wasn't just once or twice, was it? I've got solid evidence. You might as well admit it. You're definitely going to have to pay damages. Don't be ridiculous. If we're talking damages, I should be the one claiming them. You dumped everything on Kenny while acting all high and mighty. Now that you're divorced, we're talking about splitting assets too, right? If you want to fight, I'm ready to take you on. Does she even understand her position? She's acting all tough but she's just the mistress. There's no way she can win against me, the wife. Anyone can see that. And yet she talks as if she's in a stronger position. I couldn't help but be baffled by her mindset. Sounds like Kenny hasn't told you anything. What? Kenny ended up doing all the housework and childcare because he chose that life. And by the way, he signed a contract about it which I have in my possession. It's got his fingerprint on it and everything, so it's stronger than any regular contract. What? Clearly, Kenny hadn't told her a thing. Hearing about the contract, Hannah was visibly shaken. She must have thought she could just bluff her way through and squeeze some money out of me. 
but there's no way I'm letting that happen. This is my chance to finally settle the score. Kenny, Emily, and Hannah are all going to get what they deserve. By the way, I've also kept the contract we signed when we had our child. If this goes to court, I'm pretty sure you'll be the one at a disadvantage. Let's just calm down and talk this out. There's no need for a lawsuit. We can resolve this like adults. What? What are you talking about? Typical Hannah. Unlike Kenny and Emily, she doesn't just react emotionally. The moment she realized she was in a tough spot, she switched to negotiation. But there's no way I'm letting her off that easily. I immediately changed my tone, making it harsher, and whispered some chilling words to her. You seduced someone's husband, destroyed a family, and even tried to take the kids. Do you really think I'm going to settle this with a simple discussion? I've already talked to my lawyer. You want to sue for damages? Go ahead and try. I sneered at the three of them as they panicked. You think Kenny has the kind of assets worth fighting over? Big mistake. The money he had was just what I deposited for our living expenses. He's unemployed and broke. What? So you've been deceiving me from the start. What about him leaving in a suit every morning? That statement confirmed they were living together. I had all the evidence I needed now. This was a total victory for me. They didn't stand a chance. And to think Kenny even pretended to go to work just to look good in front of Hannah. What a pathetic waste of effort. I couldn't understand it. Well, that's... If you want to argue, do it after we're done here. Now, for the main event. I've been recording this entire conversation, and it's on speaker for the team to hear too. What? Hearing those words, Hannah realized she was saying things that put her at a disadvantage. She immediately stopped talking, and an awkward silence filled the air. She was probably trying to figure out how to get out of this situation. I could tell she was thinking hard to find a way, but I wasn't going to give her that chance. I pushed Kenny and them even further into a corner. I've got solid proof of your affair, and if we take this to court, my victory is guaranteed. Are you trying to blackmail me? When Hannah realized what I was getting at, she raised her voice in anger, and one of my students, visibly annoyed, was about to jump in. But I quickly stopped her and continued speaking calmly. Blackmail? Don't make me laugh. You think this is just about money? What? She probably wanted me to deny it, but that wasn't happening. Last month, a company agreed to sponsor our dance team. The CEO recently visited, so I had the chance to meet with him. He's the CEO of a beverage company. Anna finally seemed to realize what I was getting at. Her confidence disappeared, and she started to stumble over her words. I'm thinking of sharing this conversation with him, along with all the evidence, photos, recordings, everything. Please don't. The moment I said that, Hannah screamed at me to stop. Kenny and Emily listening beside her must have been shocked too. I could easily imagine their shoulders jolting in surprise. Oh, what's wrong? Why are you suddenly so loud? Please, I'm begging you, don't do that. I'll do whatever you say. What's with this sudden change? What happened? Well, Hala was clearly struggling to find the right words, unable to speak. So, I revealed a secret she didn't want anyone to know. Yeah, you'd be in big trouble if he found out. That reaction makes sense. After all, that company CEO is your father, isn't he? What? Yes. The CEO of the beverage company sponsoring our team was none other than Hannah's father. 
Hannah's father has been a dedicated supporter of mine since my active days, a true fan. He had previously offered to support me, and since he wanted to meet me in person, I kept it on hold. I wanted to get Hannah's permission too, which is why I told her about it. She was jealous because her father favored me. I was aware of that. I wonder what your father, the CEO of a big company, would think if he found out about this. Please, anything but that. Oh, it might be too late for that. You see, your father has been listening to this entire conversation with us. What? The moment I revealed this shocking truth, time seemed to stop for Hannah. To prove it, I asked her father to speak, and the tone of Hannah's voice shifted dramatically when she heard him. You're a real piece of work, aren't you? Dad, it's not what you think. I only did this to trap her and about the marriage. Marriage. Hannah's facade began to crumble. The moment she mentioned marriage in front of Kenny, her father revealed a shocking truth. If you're talking about the engagement, I'll inform your fiance's family that it's off. He's too good for a foolish daughter like you. Go ahead and marry or date that man if you want. I'm done with you. Wait, Dad, please listen to me. Hey, what's going on? Marriage? Engagement? Hannah? As the two of them began their ugly argument, I quietly ended the call. I immediately blocked their numbers and turned off my phone. After that, everything started moving quickly. As it turned out, Hannah has been engaged for about two months. Her fiancé is a business partner of her father's company, which is another big catch. He's a successful man, and I've met him before. So I explained the situation to Hannah's father. Just like earlier, he was furious and told the fiancé everything. The fiancé had already been suspicious of Hannah's behavior, so he quickly understood and called off the engagement. As a result, Hannah lost the trust of both her fiancé and her father and was disowned. She had been living comfortably thanks to her father, but that lifestyle was now stripped away. On top of that, I filed a claim for damages, and now she works nonstop from morning till night. I've heard she's completely broken, both mentally and physically. As for Kenny and Emily, once they found out Hannah had been using them, all hell broke loose. They realized that Hannah never loved them. She was only using them to get to me. The moment they learned the truth, they were furious. However, Hannah only said things. She never actually took any action. In the end, it was Kenny and Emily who decided to side with Hannah, cut ties with me, and go through with the divorce. They brought this on themselves. Hannah discarded them, and they ended up turning to his parents for help. But things didn't go as they'd hoped. We don't know you anymore. Don't come back here. When you find a new place, let us know, and we'll send your furniture and belongings. You'll have to pay for the shipping. We have no other business with you. His parents had had enough of them. Instead of getting angry or lecturing them, they simply relayed the necessary information and shut them out. With nowhere else to turn, they started calling me repeatedly. Please, Samantha, we were wrong. We didn't know we were being tricked by her. Mom, I'm so sorry. I won't go against you anymore. I'll listen to you and think seriously about my future. So please, come back. Let's be a family again. Hearing the Misubi and apologize, I just laughed at them mockingly. What a joke. Don't you get it? I don't want anything to do with you anymore. No. As I listened to their voices filled with despair, I delivered one final blow. I know I made you feel lonely at times, 
but I also made sure to give you all the love I could. And now, after being betrayed like this, I'm going to take it all the way. You'll regret betraying me. You'll see hell for it. Hearing those words, the two of them gasped, struck silent by fear. They desperately tried to apologize, but I ended the call without listening to their pleas. I instructed my lawyer to file claims for both the infidelity and the divorce. Given the combination of infidelity and trespassing, Kenny didn't get a share in the division of assets. Moreover, since he didn't have enough savings to pay the damages, Kenny and Emily were forced to leave the city and ended up working on a tuna fishing boat. They're both working long, grueling hours, from early morning until late at night, living their own version of hell. When my manager told me about their current situation, I felt completely at peace. The dancers around me were moved by the satisfying turn of events, and we celebrated that night. We enjoy delicious food and drinks. This is how women should be. No way am I going to let a man trample over my life. You're all absolutely right. We women have to live strong. Our dance team has always prided itself on projecting the image of strong women, so everyone praised me for standing up for myself. Mary joined in too, and we had a big party that night. We partied so hard that it even affected the next day's lessons. To me, these dancers are my true family. I'll continue to support them as we aim even higher together. I swore to commit myself to their success.